Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV, the fun and entertaining way to sharpen your IT skills. Visit itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid and use code AAA30 to get a free seven-day trial and 30% off a monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. And by WordPress. Make wordpress.com your online home. Plans start at just $4 a month. Go to wordpress.com slash allaboutandroid to get 15% off your brand new website today. And by Hover. Register a domain name with Hover and build your online brand today. Go to hover.com slash twit and save 10% off your first purchase. Hello and welcome to All About Android. This is episode 352, recorded on Tuesday, January 16th, 2018. We are your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Hello. Welcome back from CES. Thank you. You survived. I wish I was still sleeping. I'm not going to lie. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I need to sleep for like two days. I'm yeah. so tired. Did you get the, the con flu, though? The uh, CES fortunately, I didn't, mm -hmm. it looks like. Good. Um, Knock on. But I'm definitely What's tired. Yet? yet? Yet. You haven't gotten it yet. I mean, it takes it's some a, while to incubate, right? Yeah, it can be yep. a creeper. Yeah. It can. Uh, well, we're really happy to have you back. And we are super delighted to welcome to the show for the very first time, Corey Ladislaw, who is a, well, you are a number of things. You are a Google developer expert. You are an Android development consultant, Android developer, of course. You are an author. What what else have you done? You've done a lot of things. I, like in writing this, I was like, man, I don't know how I could summarize it. You would probably be best to summarize it. I mean, I don't really have a short summary. It's just, I speak, <laughs> I do this, I do that, I do that. So yeah, I think you got most of the things. I write or manage um, Android developers or write Android code, speak a lot, been doing keynotes for the last two years, which has been an interesting challenge. Um, yeah, I wrote an ebook, doing some video courses. And right now I'm on a creative sabbatical. So that's been a lot of fun, um, taking time off and doing things like drawing at museums for four months. Oh, that's amazing! That's cool. awesome to kind of to kind of reinvigorate, re-inspire you in the other facets of your life, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so I've just been trying to figure out exactly what I want that next step to be. So yeah. I'm just take some time to take some stock and figure out where I want to be and what I want to do. And I'm still a work in progress, but it was really nice just to kind of hang out at the Tate mostly in London for a few months. I also um, spoke at a few conferences, so I was flying around and traveling for that. Yeah, I've noticed you've you've done a lot of speaking. If you just do a search for Corey's name on YouTube, you're going to find a whole bunch of your speaking engagements. What would you say, I mean, in a lot of these appearances that you've had, keynote talks, that sort of stuff, what would you say your overarching kind of, um, kind of message is in that role as a developer talking to uh, other developers? Yeah, so the two major ones um, I'm most passionate about, and one is um, caring about emerging markets. Um, so I did the keynote for that one for a year and a half or so. And then most recently, I've been talking about the creative technologist. So it's been how do you bring creativity into your technology uh, day to day? And how do you build that creative muscle? And how do you expand your creativity by doing art or other things that um, can add creativity to your life? Well, that's awesome. I love that. I would love to be yeah. able to take a break from the, the I think I think everyone would benefit from being able to kind of step outside their normal life and be able to take like a, a creative sabbatical. Like I, I imagine just for like resetting your brain a little mm -hmm. bit or or even challenging yourself in a different way, proving to yourself that you can do this thing that's so far outside of anything you would normally do. Um, and to, like you say, see what kind of doors that opens. That's really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really good because, uh, there was a lot of change in the last year or two personally. So it's been really nice to just kind of take that time and recenter. Absolutely. Totally cool. understand that. 
Well, it's uh, great to have you on, Corey. We, of course, with this show, we talk a lot about uh, a lot of different news items. Then a little bit later, we'll we'll get in and we'll review some apps. We've got four apps for the arena this week, but we've got a lot of news to discuss. Some heavy topics as well. We discussed Huawei's crushed U.S. carrier ambitions. <laughs> I don't know if it qualifies to the level of crushed, but Annihilated. I feel like so. <laughs> you know, they were a little disappointed in that. Uh, LG's limited flagship release plans. Samsung's foldable smartphone prototype pops its head up again, and apparently some people at CES got to, got a chance to look at it. Uh, I'm. This is not a laptop in front of me that I'm probably firing off. This is a Google Home. There you go. Uh, okay, stop, stop. Uh, Google Home Max, and my laptop is behind it, by the way. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to review this because I've been playing around with this for like three weeks now, and I love it. Uh, face matching selfies uh, with modern art. I think we all did that challenge. Yes, and we, we did, and we all helped contribute to <laughs> for Google's better, machine learning. For better or for worse. <laughs> It's hard just, not to jump into that band. We, we lined up to populate that database. <laughs> yes, As we, we do with everything that Google does. It's a sickness. It really is. Uh, and a whole lot more. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what we got. We're going to dive right got. in for, uh, with some of the top stories here with the news, Victor. Despite instant... Sorry. Despite <laughs> intense pressure... There's no cutting ties with Android news. <laughs> you recovered. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah, I think I salvage it. When, when you fall off the bike, you just got to hop back on and keep riding. That's what they say anyways. Uh, that's it? what they say with the news bumper anyways. Is it? Uh, no, they never say that. Huawei is having a difficult time positioning its devices in U.S. Still. carrier stores. Still. This is, I mean, this, this isn't a challenge isolated to just Huawei, but Huawei had big ambitions Right. As of like three years ago, four years ago is when it started. <laughs> I just want to preface it with that, that this has been going on for like Thank since you. 2014. <laughs> yes, this is not a short-term issue here. No. Huawei was set to announce its partnership with AT&T at the Consumer Electronics Show last week with the Mate 10 Pro that was apparently going to be mm. in carrier stores. There were ads for it in Vegas oh announcing goodness. this availability. Wow, but last wow. minute, AT&T <laughs> canceled the deal. Huawei has also sought a deal with Verizon as well, similar deal, but that's not likely to happen for the same reason. What is the reason? Well, it seems to all point back to uh, members of Congress who lobbied against the deals with federal regulators. There's a proposed bill that would block U.S. government contracts with telecom companies that do business uh, um, that use Huawei or ZTE equipment. And outside of phones, which is what we talk about a lot on this show, we talk yes. about the phones that they do. They also make and sell a lot of networking equipment. And uh, back in 2011, there was a congressional yes. uh, investigation that found that companies, that these companies were, quote, at the direction of the Chinese Communist Party. Yes. And as such instilled, a, let's say, a lack of trust uh, in, in the American government, in the U.S. government, that these devices weren't, in fact, you know, that they couldn't be, or they could, rather, be commandeered by the Chinese government to intercept communications. And as such, we shouldn't have that in the U.S. government because that doesn't sound very secure. So this is all, like, related, right, Flo? Related. <laughs> I yes. mean, it's all, it all kind of kind of points uh, Well, I'm back just like itself. thinking about why now we are scared, why now there are maybe American businesses that are, have trepidation about getting into business with a Chinese based company. And I would think that because the current administration has made it known that, that that's a huge market we are in, in we are competing with. Sure. So. Part, part of it absolutely is so it has something to do about, with the, the current administration, I, yeah, I would imagine. It's also, but it is a bipartisan concern, and it, it, is, do, yes. and it does stretch far earlier than just the the Trump administration. I just no, absolutely. I just find it very interesting. That this is all like still coincide. This is all still happening. Yeah, this is all still. I know. Anyway, it's kind of that's exhausting. where my brain is going. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? I mean. Would you like to see Huawei devices, ZTE devices in carrier stores? Do you think this is a, a lot of, um, I don't know, a, 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 an overreaction, let's say? What do you think? Sorry, I didn't direct that at anyone. Uh, do you <laughs> let's, hear from, let's hear from Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize. Um, Corey, what do you think about this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just I kind of echo Florence's, like, is this still going on? Um, it's better to have more choice, but obviously if there's going to be some security concerns around it, then we should be a little bit more careful. Yeah. 
makes sense that the government would would be concerned about that considering um considering their history with this topic not to mention yeah. how difficult is it going to be bringing in like another smartphone brand with the number of ones that have already taken over our advertising slots like we've we've got a lot of brands here that are really competing for our eyes we have motorola we have samsung we have lg we have google we have apple well, yes, there are a lot of brands. There's always room for more competition, sure, right? Sure, but there's not a lot of room to teach all those employees at those carrier stores, like to give them the proper knowledge to be able to sell these phones to consumers. Right. Because I imagine a lot of these places are incentivized by how much education they get on each of these phones. And of course, Samsung and Apple have people, recruiters or whatever they're called in the carriers that are helping inform the sellers about mm -hmm. what's what. And it's just to put a phone to sell it here has so, there's so much as you have to invest in it because you have to do so much outreach. Um, Huawei as a company, as yeah. a phone manufacturer, is no definitely no spring chicken, right? No, like they're, no. They're like one of, are they the third or fourth? The, like the largest? fourth. Yeah. I was really surprised by that. Yeah. Yep. So, so, I mean, you know, they, they have a lot of experience. The, the challenge, of course, when when it comes to the U.S. market is that it's so carrier driven, carrier yeah. store driven. All, all these companies have some sort of a presence here. It's just you have to know about the brand. You have to buy it purposefully through their site or, you know, through Amazon or whatever unlocked on the on the web. And just for the majority of American buyers, that's not a practice that's very, I don't know, very familiar. But it's in not. other places, because a lot of people don't have a lot of people don't understand the idea of the unlocked phone. Maybe it wasn't really they weren't really told about it because we know our carriers to be so proprietary and keep us locked in, especially back in the day when they subsidized our phones more. Yeah. Now it's kind of it's just a really tricky market. Um, I'm just sort of I'm also just sort of curious about the fact that this seems pretty limited right now to Huawei and ZTE to like very big. Mm -hmm. um, overseas companies. Mm -hmm. Like, why are they having all this trouble? <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and I mean, <laughs> I mean, in the in regards to these two companies, it yeah. seems like a large part of that is the whole networking hardware aspect, yeah. and you know that you, you can't even get there that hardware in uh, in U.S. government contracts anymore for for this very reason. Yeah. Now it's kind of expanding out to where the government says, well, we won't even you know do business with a, com a company, a carrier that does business with Huawei or ZTE that carries their phones and has some sort of a business contract with them. So it's broadening that out. Um, Huawei CEO Richard Yu was, at, did you go to the Huawei keynote? I at, didn't, at but I totally read this. I yeah. totally read about it. Yeah, I didn't go, but I read it. <laughs> but I read it. Well, the CEO Richard Yu um, basically went off script during the CES keynote. At the very end, did the whole you know the the whole presentation for uh, the Mate. What is it? The Mate Ten Pro. Yeah. Uh, but then at the very end, like, you know, and, and people were there looking at the the prompter to see and they were like, oh, sure enough, there's nothing there. He's mm -hmm. off script for probably a good five minutes talking, uh, just kind of giving some sort of, you know, straight, straight shooting um, uh, kind of talk about how disappointing this was, how limiting it was for consumer choice. I, it really seemed like Huawei saw this as their big opportunity to break into the U.S. market in a big way and you know for 2018, and they kind of don't have that opportunity as a result of this. I don't know whether I, that's a good or a bad thing. It just is. It's it's a, definitely it's a challenging thing because uh, part of it is is that we've we've kind of moved. It re, this reminds me a lot of for, the foreign cars coming into America in the 60s and 70s and 80s. You know, like this kind of thing where there was a lot of pushback on Japanese cars and things like that. And now, you know, you know, Hyundai and, you know, Honda and stuff like that, they're common, mm -hmm. you know, they're household names. And I think a lot of it is that we have moved to a global economy and a global marketplace. Um, but, you know, like we touched on a lot of the political leanings and the kind of the world that we live in today, you know, there's an attempt to pull it back to more of a nationalistic kind of approach um, and a fear of China and, and, and th that sort of thing. And for me, I like, 
I want the most amount of choice for myself as well as other consumers and customers. And I don't really feel a lot of nationalistic pride. Like, you know, you know, it's got to be an American company or stuff like that. It's wherever you get the best piece of equipment from wherever, you know, whether it's a Chinese phone or an Indian phone or a Korean phone or, you know, I don't see how you make a distinction. Samsung's OK because they're South Korean, but Huawei's not OK because they're Chinese. You know, like it just like that distinction to me just it seems very uh, antiquated in this uh, global world that we live in now. Yeah. But maybe yeah. maybe I'm a little maybe I'm a little Pollyanna, but I don't know. Yeah, he was uh, in his um, keynote. He was talking about trust and having to earn trust over time, and they've done that with a lot of the different products in a lot of different markets. And that was really interesting that they partnered with the UK um, government to have them do some oversight to make sure that there's no security flaws and stuff. Mm. So that's how they ended up breaking into the UK market. There you go. Yeah. Um, Anyways, interesting nonetheless. Huawei, I mean, the, the hardware that they produce and the price point that they hit with that quality of hardware, and ZTE to a large degree does this as well, but Huawei's really known for this right now, um, it would make it, I think, pretty palatable to the U.S. market if it was presented in a way that it kind of has to be in order to make it here, and that's in the carrier. So I can understand their disappointment. I can also stand the, understand the other side if there's actually something concrete there. If there's a there there, then I get it. <laughs> I guess I don't know for sure if there is a there there. If uh, there is a there. Is there a there there? there. All right. Somewhere out there. <laughs> you know what there is? There's a hundred uh -huh. billion dollars in Xiaomi's pocket. That's a Chinese brand that's managed to hit it big without even bothering with the U.S. market. No kidding. So Xiaomi, which we've all heard about, uh, could be on the brink of an IPO targeting a $100 billion valuation. That is huge. Wow. Dang. Xiaomi did this while focusing on Chinese and Indian market and foregoing the US and Europe. So see, it's you don't possible. need us. Yeah, you don't need you us don't anyway. Need us at all. It's the second largest manufacturer in India behind Samsung. Its strategy is less about US European dominance and more about targeting emerging markets, which is where this phone is where these brands of phones are, this brand of phones are quite popular. Absolutely. I had a hard time with that sentence. Um, <laughs> anyway, that bet is paying off, obviously. Uh, it launched the Mi A1, the first Android One device in 40 markets, which definitely helped sort of beef up um, its presence in those emerging market, uh, markets. And uh, it's worth noting that Facebook actually IPU'd IPU'd. IPU. This is an adventure with you, Flood. This is great. You know why? It's because the coffee's starting to kick in, and now my tongue is moving faster than I can talk. It's, it's the post CES. That's what it is. I quite like it. It's IPU. also the post CES. I really need to, like, I should, yeah. I should have slept for a couple of days. You need a break. Um, starting that over Facebook IPO, originally $104 billion valuation. Also wow. worth noting, did you guys really see, and this is not mentioned here, and I'm going to try and bring this up very quickly, Hugo Barra? What's Chicken hands with Xiaomi, Hugo Barra of now Oculus. Uh huh. They made a little, made a little handshake at uh, CES. What do you think it means? What does it mean? I mean, it means exactly what. <laughs> it means they were saying hi. Means... Were they saying hi to each other? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Who who knows who knows what what's going on there? I think they were just being friendly. It's the Oculus Go. It's built by Xiaomi. That's what. Ah, okay. It there we go. Snapdragon I didn't see that processor. news actually. Um, it was actually kind of quiet news. It didn't, for some reason, splash. VR was not a thing at CES this year. Interesting. It just wasn't really that, people. Yeah. They were there, but that's not what people were interested in. So, okay. So, emerging markets. Xiaomi has proven to be really adept at its strategy for emerging markets. We happen to have someone on today yes, who, sent, who focuses uh, a, a whole lot Corey. on emerging markets. Uh, Corey, <laughs> in in kind of in your work and your time talking about these topics, like what is your impression about Xiaomi and what it's doing right for emerging markets? Yeah, well, um, it sounds like they're creating premium phones at a low price, which is kind of what needs to happen. You can't just create the cheapest ones and throw it out there and right. have everybody use it. And now people will use them, of course, because um, the more affordable people are going to pick them up. Um, but it's nice that you can meet a bunch of different um, segments in those markets whenever you're going for um, mid-range and high-range with those um, bigger, uh, those better devices. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I just think it's 
really interesting that they didn't even have to bother with the West at all. And they're creating, um, you know, factories in India and stuff to make it even cheaper. So they don't have to deal with import export taxes and things like that. So uh, I'm, I was unclear if they were doing Android one, like following that spec, or if they're just kind of creating their own um, version. Do you, do you all know about that? You mean the, the me a one, the Android yeah. One device. I believe they're following and, spec. Yeah, oh. yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure with that one they're following spec. I, I I have to imagine that Android One just as an effort has a certain spec that that must be hit in order to actually qualify. Um, yeah. But so yeah, that hasn't been absolutely transformative yet. Um, right. But I'm hoping to see more and more phones um, that will help to make that a little bit better, so that you don't have to support as many old OSs throughout the world and can just focus on the newer API levels. Well, and that's that's an interesting point that you bring up about Android One, because I remember, you know, I think we all remember when it was announced a couple of years ago. It was like, wow, this is, you know, this is really big, reaching the next next billion, and just kind of, you know. But I guess when Android One started coming out, we already had a number of low cost, premium ish, or you know, high quality devices mm -hmm. hitting the market. So Android One maybe missed the boat a little bit on kind of like catching that wave or setting that wave for others to follow. Kind of felt like they were kind of tagging along. What has been your take on on Android One from you know from the standpoint of it being Google's specific effort for these markets? I mean, are they being outdone by other companies like Xiaomi in that regard? Yeah, I can't comment very deeply on that because um, I haven't been following the manufacturers and the phones as yeah. much. Uh, more of the development side of it and sure. making sure that your phones work better in the emerging markets. Um, but it still seems like Android One didn't just um, take over and then everybody just started following that. It sounds like there are more and more. Um, but yeah, again, yeah. I'm, I'm not a hardware uh, knowledgeable person. Fair enough. Um, cool. So, I mean, Xiaomi, I, I keep holding out for, you know, the the day when Xiaomi will actually be able to release a phone here because I really like Xiaomi hardware, but it kind of sounds like, you know, they don't need us. They don't need the U.S. They don't need us. And yeah. maybe they should hang out with Huawei and they can talk about... I think they do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just... It's just saying you it, could it go, actually get it. Sorry. Yeah. I, I was, was just saying... saying go, go ahead. After you. Sorry, Corey. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was just saying that the article also mentioned that you could actually get it in uh, high-end markets like UK and here, um, but it's like really hard to do so. You have to go through a bunch of different channels. Yeah. I mean, there there are ways. There are ways to import it in and, you know, sometimes it's as easy as going on Amazon and finding it that way or whatever. But um, Or AliExpress. Yeah, AliExpress. Yeah. Yes, friend of the show, AliExpress. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, what were you going to say? I was, I was going to say, going back to my comments earlier, it just go, it goes to show how big the world actually is. And you got to wonder, you know, while Huawei wants, you know, everybody wants the glory that is Apple on the iPhone, Xiaomi is being smart and just chasing the dollars and, and yep. building a strong business, which, you know, a, glo a, a true global business. Yep. So, you know, it's not always about being the sexy device. It's being about the device that actually is connecting with people and being and actually driving revenue. I think that's... Uh, bravo on Xiaomi for recognizing that and just What's, moving on. Yeah. What so. does that say about us as the American market that this is like not that we're not getting this much choice or having these brands over here? Like, what does that say about our market being so difficult to enter? That's I mean, it's I, mean, I, we're I trying think to that's I think I think it says more about the carriers than the, than the yeah, manufacturers. Yeah. I think that I think that's the we've always said the biggest problem or I've, I don't know someone said the biggest problem with all these mobile devices is the carriers, you know, between, you know, the 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 deals and the and the the limits and the subsidies and all this sort of stuff. Carriers seem to be the problem here um, where you don't have that problem in other countries. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have choice. I think yeah. you're spot on. We don't yep. even have very much choice on carriers as it is here. We nope. can only really pick from, I mean, we have MVNOs, but, but a lot are, of them yeah. are owned by all the big four, yeah, by exactly one or two right. of the big four. Yep. Yeah. Well, we're going to we're gonna go to having a little less choice uh, in the phone market, at least, mm -hmm. uh, as LG uh, is going to stop releasing new phones every year, uh, which is kind of startling when you think about that statement. Um, after having 11 straight quarters of earnings losses, that's 11 straight quarters, that equates to just under three years of losses. Uh, they're changing their strategy when it comes to devices. They're pulling away from releasing a new flagship phone every year. Uh, they're moving to more of a, quote, when it is needed and not just because other rivals do it. Um, they're going to stick with existing models longer by offering variant models. 
Um, and there were and uh, related to this, there were rumors late last year that point to HTC HTC pairing back the number of devices it releases in 2018, but not sacrificing a flagship release like LG is doing here. And I gotta say, from a business standpoint, bravo LG. Yeah. Don't don't play to keeping up with the Joneses game, especially when you've got a great phone like LG has been able to make for how many years? Like the the fact that they've suffered earnings losses for the past three years does not equate to the fact that I think for the past and Flo, correct me if I'm wrong, at least two years we've recommended an LG phone as, as a phone people should check out. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is the first year actually in a while that we've actually really said go get an LG flagship or go get an LG. Yep. Premium device. It was this year that I actually suggested to people, and I, I've been suggesting mostly the LG V30 at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's the su suggestion so, a lot of people have. And had. And if you're at CES, if you went to CES, um, LG had this giant booth, as it naturally does. It's a big display manufacturer, after all. Um, but they were really showing off a lot of like the connected home, how they're integrating um, this new ThinkQ platform, which I realize sounds silly, but it Thank really you. is about integrating assistants, uh, the Google Assistant and um, the Amazon Assistant, which I'm not going to say because I don't want to trigger anything, uh, really integrating those into their existing existing product lineup that people know them for. So you've got the OLED TVs, which have the web OS, web OS built in, which is pretty great. You've got it built in like the appliances, you've got it built in all these different parts of the LG ecosystem. And they're even launching smart speakers and um, and the the Google Assistant with displays. I forget what it's called now. Oh yeah, the the uh, oh, the new initiative. The, the, we talked the home, about this last the, week. Yeah, the home displays. What are they yep. called? Yeah, they know. were one of the four yeah. that announced one last week. And mm -hmm. so I see like it's just it's doing more of a you know what, we're just gonna focus on getting more of our ecosystem into your home right now versus trying to compete. The with smart this phone displays game. As, yeah. as they were calling yeah. them. Lenovo, Sony, JBL and LG. Yeah. Uh, those are going to need product. Camera. Those are going to need product names, by the way. Smart display or Google Home with a screen is not going to work. <laughs> I was trying to think of how to write it today. I was writing something, and I'm like, I have no idea what to classify these as. I have no idea. I guess smart displays. Meanwhile, next year, this time, we'll all have one. Oh, right. yeah, no, I will probably have four in like three months. Let's be real here. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, we have an email from Darren in Columbus, Ohio, who says, just used Android Pay for the first time at a Dunkin' Donuts in Columbus, Ohio. It was faster than using a credit card. I finally feel like I'm living in the future, uh, except my phone is a Galaxy 5. So I guess I'm not quite there yet. But thanks for all the info on Android Pay. It helped me feel comfortable using the service that's what it's all about. I, I still am not that comfortable with Android Pay or Google Pay or whatever they're calling it these days. Corey, are, are you? Is is this part of your payment routine? Uh, you turning to Google Pay or Android Pay to uh, pay for your things instead of you know pulling out a card? I, I can't get into that habit. Can you? No, not really. Um, although <clears throat> there was one day where I forgot my credit card and I don't know. I had to go through this whole thing where um, I needed to pay the bike place I was at to fix my tire. Um, and I ended up paying with Android pay. Um, but that was just random. Um, I have it set up in my phone. I think I use it to pay randomly stuff, but, yeah. um, yeah, it's just not something I really do. Um, and I spent three months in Europe last year. I just really want the, the cards you can just tap and go. They use them everywhere. I guess you could do that with your phone too, but you still have to open up um, your app and say, I think you do, and then say, I want to pay instead yeah, of just yeah. like, tap and go. So, okay, so I'm not familiar with how how it's done in Europe. It's been a long time. Oh, there's Wi-Fi actually. cards. Yeah, there's <laughs> Wi-Fi. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and they're just like credit card form factor? That's yeah, they're a credit card, and you just instead of swiping it, you touch to the it's little built thing into the credit card. Table. So how long yeah. until we get that, or do we? Uh, it's that? a security. It's the same. We're having problems with the chip readers, but to that end, that's why I'm using Android Pay, which I, by the way, call Apple Pay at Starbucks because they don't know it as any other way. <laughs> so I just go, uh, yes, I'm going to use Apple Pay, and then I whip out my Pixel, and they go, what kind of phone is that? And it's like, well, obviously, you don't know. Uh, Victor, <laughs> if you want to take my overhead shot. Uh, I do the same oh. flow. I walk into a store and I say, oh, I'd like to it. use Why? Apple Pay. And actually, uh. it's this iPhone 10 that I have to use for six weeks. 
So. Uh, now, do you want to explain to the listeners why? Are you <laughs> yeah, we should probably let our if, listeners know what if they don't know what uh, what contract you've signed. Yeah, I I didn't know I was signing this contract. Okay, well, this did. this time last year, Megan Maroney and I we do a show together. Then it was Tech News Today. Now it's Tech News Weekly. Uh, she's you know diehard iOS. I'm lifelong Android. Never had played around with iOS before. We did a month swap of phones to see what it was like on the other side, and it was an interesting month. I learned a lot about iOS. Here it is a year later, and she said, you want to do it again? And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, because you can always learn more. And then during the show, she said, and we're doing it for six weeks. I had no idea that we were doing it for six weeks. Apparently, I'm using an iPhone 10 for six weeks, but that's where we're at right now. Hey, it's good to learn these things. It's good to know yeah, what it's like sure. living on the other side, right? Sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. She, Actually, yeah. Corey, before prior to Android, you were iOS. I I know that. I know that much, right? You've you've talked about that a couple of times in some of your keynotes that were on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, uh, what prompted yeah. you to switch? What what? Tell us the story behind that. Well, basically, um, iOS and uh, the iPhone was you know one of the major things that came out. So I just bought that at first, um, but I really hated AT and T. So I decided to switch as soon as my contract was up. And um, I was working at Comcast uh, as an iOS developer, but only for like two or three months. And then um, they needed the Android team started. So I started the Android team and just happened to get an Android phone from Verizon at that time. Um, and that was Motorola X. And that was awful. Yes. And I returned it. And then I got the HTC Incredible and yes. absolutely loved it. Oh, yes. the Incredible. That was, the phone. Yeah, that, that was a good phone. That, that opened good the phone. floodgates. <laughs> yeah. I missed that phone. It was perfect size. Um, yeah. I had it I mean, for I three years. Too, but uh, yeah. I, I really missed that phone. And then there was a time, actually, so last year, so I had an LG G4, which I really loved too, but then it, uh, I cracked it and then it went into an infinite reboot loop. Um, oh. So I briefly bought an iPhone. So I got like the pink one. And then um, three months later, when I started at Pinterest, I got a Pixel and I've been back on Android. So it was like three months in the middle of many years of Android. <laughs> and I, uh, I do have an iPad, which I really love because I use it for drawing and use the uh, Apple Pencil. Yes. Okay. That's a, that's a good use too. Uh, I have a couple of artist friends and they swear by it. Um, I'm not sure that the Pixel Book with the uh, Pixel Book pen could quite stand no, up. It's not. To that. I, from what I've heard, it's not the same as the iPad Pro. Uh, no. No, not even yeah. close. I, I briefly played with um, the stylus on one of those, and it was yeah. it was good, but it's it does not feel like I'm drawing on paper like it does with um, the iPad. Yeah, that's important. Cool. Well, thank you for that. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to, to bring an iPhone onto the show. You know, sometimes... You don't have to. Sometimes... Well, I feel <laughs> like I really had to. You really don't have to. I feel like I had to at least one time yes. in six weeks because then if you, you know, if it's off on the side, you have to catch it, there's at least an explanation for it. This is what I'm using tonight. We'll talk about this in a second, but let's take a break. We're going to thank the sponsor of this episode of All About Android, and then we'll dive into some hardware news. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by IT Pro. TV and you know it's a new year you probably have some resolutions maybe uh, maybe you're looking to kind of spice up your resume uh, or you're considering an exciting new career in technology make your professional resolutions a reality this year and you can do it with the help of the content that you'll find on IT Pro TV IT Pro TV offers over 3300 hours of on demand training with more than 125 hours added weekly all kinds of topics. You can stream IT Pro TV's uh, courses live and on demand worldwide. You can use Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC. You can also use their iOS or Android apps. IT Pro TV does IT live every day, so you know you're getting the most current IT training. It's easy to stay up to date. Courses include uh, such courses as Certified Ethical Hacker, uh, Kali Linux, Linux Security Techniques, ITIL, ISC2's Security Certs, and a whole lot more. That's just hardly even scratching the surface. Uh, you can check out IT Pro TV's Team Solution for group pricing and access to the IT Pro TV Supervisor Portal. Uh, you'll gain full control over your team's training schedule. You can put them to work on all the content, create custom groups and training assignments. You can see individual and group analytics. You can also view logins, viewing time, how much time they're watching, uh, the video downloads, course completion, tracking, and a whole lot more. People are using IT Pro TV to improve their lives and get their dream jobs. That's 
actually what happened for James Packer, who discovered IT Pro TV, got his whole team to dive into that content, incentivize their learning through the service, and ultimately, in the, in the end, he was offered a better job, and it was in the Cayman Islands, literal paradise. Uh, so his dream job, James attributes his qualifications for that dream job uh, to his time learning while watching IT Pro TV. Join the more than 85,000 IT Pro TV members today and get the IT job you've always dreamed of. Friendly training, binge-worthy content, life-changing results. Visit itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid. Make sure and use the code AAA30 for a free seven-day trial. When you sign up for an individual monthly membership, you'll also receive uh, 30% off your subscription for the lifetime of your active subscription. And then premium subscriptions, which include unlimited uh, transcender practice exams and virtual labs are normally $857 a year, but you only pay $600 a year when you go to itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid. And again, make sure to use the code AAA30 and if you're interested in learning more about IT Pro TV's team solution, you can sign up for a free demo of their supervisor portal. And uh, that's all there is to it. ITPro.tv slash all about Android code AAA30. And we thank IT Pro TV for their support of all about Android. All right. We got some uh, pretty, pretty chunky hardware news. It's chunky. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it is Ch chunky. It's chunky hardware. And I almost missed this first one because it seemed to break. I completely close. missed it too, actually. Just to be in all honesty, what we missed uh, was a huge Droid Life scoop, no which kidding. is <laughs> Motorola's entire 2018 smartphone release schedule, oh my complete goodness. with specifications and renders. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle up, you're in for a ride <laughs> for the exciting Moto Z3 and Z3 Play, which are the flagships. These are six inch borderless display smartphones with no visible fingerprint sensor. Is it under display? Is, huh? it, is it somewhere else? I don't know. We don't know. Uh, Moto Mod <laughs> with 5G branding. So we see that's going to be a thing this year. Yeah, yeah. we're going to see a lot of that. ZTE, by the way, I did mention it earlier. They yes. said they were going to have the first 5G smartphone uh, yeah. to release this year. So this is the year of 5G. Fun fact, yeah. they already put 5G towers in Sacramento. So if fun. we want to go, check it out. We just have to take a little two-hour drive. Cool. So if we you're can filling look at, up look to at it, the tower. we could just go look at the tower and be like, hey. They all have a phone that, that works <laughs> with you. Someday, like three years from now. Yeah. Next up is the Moto X5. This has got slim bezels, 5.9-inch display, so still pretty big display. It's got a notch at the top like uh, Jason's new little iPhone 10, whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> dual cameras, Moto Smart AI, and again, no visible fingerprint sensor. <gasps> it's a thing with the whole lineup. It better be embedded somewhere, because let me tell you, the last time somebody didn't have a fingerprint sensor, they were called Sony, and what happened to them now in the United States? I doubt they'd get rid of it entirely, or they'll replace it with something, yeah. Uh, for the G fans, the Moto G6, G6 Play, and G6 Plus are also coming. They have all glass bodies. The G6 Play is a 5.7-inch display with a 16 by 9 ratio, 4,000 milliamp battery. The G6 and G6 Plus have 5.7 inch displays, uh, rather 5.7 and 5.93 inch displays respectively as an 18.9, 18 to nine ratio, which is uh, what the the V30, mm. the G6, the, the longer, GSA, slender, the Note 8, they all ratio. have that ratio. Um, inside they have a Snapdragon 450, so relatively mid-range processor with three or four gigs of RAM or 32 and or and 32 or 64 gigs of storage, <laughs> <laughs> as well as dual cameras. And lastly, we have the Moto E5, which, which I is don't similar know if I to, sorry, Victor. to the Moto E4, but it has a fingerprint on the back, which is where the fingerprint belongs forever and ever. I don't care what you say, don't at me. Not even, not, not even <laughs> under the display, as as seems to be what what. I do not unlock things with my thumb. I unlock things with my index fingers on either side. I'm not a thumb unlocker. I'm sorry. I never got into it. 
Um, are you a thumb unlocker, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> Only on the iPad sometimes. Oh, yeah, because that's on the front. Yeah. I have like three or four fingers programmed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I noticed while you were reading this, uh, Victor, if you go back to the Z3 or the X5, either of those I think shows it. And then we'll talk, and then we'll end up going back to the G6 to show the photos. But on the Z3 or the X5, if you show that on screen, down at the very bottom, underneath the launcher, you see the little, you know, embedded in the display is the little kind of like long. I don't know what is that a cylinder or something? That's a speaker. No, 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 no. Look in the display. Mm -hmm. See that little graphic down there? Chloe enhanced. Now go now go to the G6, <laughs> which does have a fingerprint sensor in the hardware. Sorry to have you jump through fiery hoops. Thank you, Victor. Yeah, and thank you for all of your work. Uh, <laughs> thank you for thank you for your service to this show, Victor. Victor, you are the Chloe to my Jack. <laughs> Sorry, the, the wrong direction. Sorry. Well, okay. Well, um, what I've noticed is that both on the Z3 and the X5, that shape matches the actual fingerprint sensor that is on the G6. So I'm guessing that is probably underneath the, the glass. All right. Right. That's guess like who else the, the will probably landmark have it underneath for it. The glass. Hmm? Then guess who else will probably have it underneath the glass? Everybody else. That Everyone. will be the new hip thing to do this year if you don't have it on the back. Do you think Samsung's going to have it under the glass? Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to even show. It's just going to be there, and they're going to be like, just touch. It's magic. The whole screen is a sensor. Put They'll do a whole like it. advertisement that's just like, touch it anywhere and unlock it. That's what it'll be. <laughs> That'll be the tagline. Touch it anywhere. Just touch it anywhere. Um, how, do, how do we feel? I mean, it's kind of our job to talk about things that it leak. Is. We do it all the time. <laughs> but it's January, and this is possibly Motorola's entire year's worth of releases all spilled out in graphic detail. There is a possibility this that this is like This is like me at a girl sleepover. I'm just going to give you every little detail about my life in uh, like two hours. I mean, this is kind of damaging for Motorola, right? Why is it like, damaging? For everyone to know right up front every little detail but about their phones? But it's the same faults? thing they've been doing for the last like three years. This is the same schedule that they've adhered to all these years. Yeah, but you get a lot of details here. It's maybe it's that's fair. Perhaps damaging from a from a competition perspective because all their competition knows how to rework their marketing as they lead up to compete. That's fair. Potentially, but maybe they're also like, we gotta capture you now while you're still like, you know, oh, while you you're still tired and hungover from Christmas and New Year's and CES. Now we're gonna catch you now before anybody else can get to you. Uh, what do you, what do you guys think? Is this uh, Ron Corey? Is this either of your new new phone going forward i'm guessing probably no but um <laughs> no i mean i love my pixel 2 and i just bought it um <laughs> i would be still on the pixel 1 but i dropped it in a toilet oh. so i had to replace it before they were water resistant <laughs> yes <laughs> that that happened to me actually same phone same scenario and it, the phone survived was it, it the survived the year that was required what's that was it the blue one yeah wow oh what i talked about this on the, the show already yeah, true. I just like the blue one. Um, I, this I is not my next phone. I too like my Pixel, but uh, I do like Motorola, and I will keep an open mind if I get my hands on it and play with it. I will definitely. They surprised me last year. I think they could surprise me this year, but I don't know if I'm jumping at it. Yeah, yeah. I, I will definitely yeah. probably get a bunch of G6s, put them in a closet, and I know in a couple months. I know this year at least three people are going to ask me, Flo, I ruined my phone. Do you have an Android phone I can borrow? <laughs> and it's always a moto. I always yeah. give them a moto and they always say, thanks. This really helped me until I was able to like get the phone I really wanted. Aww. So moto, that's, what you, <laughs> that's like, where you fit in. It's like the side phone. It's, it's the it's, side it's, piece. <laughs> it's the side phone is what it is. Never, it's never... <laughs> It's never the it's main never event. the object of affection. It's, never, it's just the it's side never the phone. Wife okay, sorry, that's Aww. too patriarchal. We're not going there. Uh, poor Motorola, but hey, we know now. All right, Ron, you got the next one. Yeah. So uh, those of you who purchase phones from OnePlus.net, we we're talking about the practice of buying phones directly from from the manufacturer's website. Um, if you recently purchased something on OnePlus.net, uh, it's possible your credit card has been stolen according to some reports. So mm. go, go look at your credit card bills. Oh. Um, a OnePlus forum thread now has uh, about 100 to 200 customers who say fraudulent activity appeared on their credit cards after their purchase of a OnePlus phone. OnePlus says their systems are secure with quote unquote custom code that sends payment data to processing via encrypted connection. 
One day after those reports, OnePlus suspended credit card transactions on the site, still investigating because they're still investigating them. That's the smart move. Don't assume any sort of guilt by them removing that. They're just doing the smart thing by protecting themselves and their customers. Um, if you do want to buy a OnePlus phone, you can. Uh, PayPal is still accepted, so you can pay with PayPal. Um, so buyer beware. Um, <laughs> but that said. Uh, at the same time, one recently OnePlus put up for sale uh, and then promptly sold out two hours later uh, the special edition sandstone white version of the 5T, and Jason has it. <gasps> but do I? I wonder, but I wonder, Jason, do you have credit card fraud at the same time? No, they actually, okay, this, is, this is a, a unit direct from OnePlus. They sent it to me, okay. so I did not have to uh, sacrifice my credit card credentials. <laughs> Uh, for this phone. But yeah, do you remember a couple of years ago with the OnePlus? I think it was the OnePlus 2 had that mm -hmm. kind of sandstone-ish kind of rough feeling back. back, And this is similar. It's not quite as rough. Ooh. But it's it almost feels like an eggshell. Ooh, show that button. Show that button. Oh, what? Oh, this button? Yeah. The little, the little toggle that's um, like red. You know, that color scheme looks pretty familiar. Yeah, doesn't it? Doesn't it? The only <laughs> thing it's missing is like a top half that's black. <laughs> Um, and a Google logo, to be fair. Yeah, that's true. But hey, for a lot of people, the OnePlus logo has it's a lot so of It's so pretty, though. It, this looks like it, it should is. have been marketed for Star Wars, like as a Stormtrooper yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, it is very nice, though. Uh, OnePlus does good hardware. So does this mean that we reset the uh, the OnePlus clock of things that went yeah. wrong with OnePlus? Yes, yeah, this is bad. I mean, it's not yeah. a marketing mistake, but it's a it's a not a good, it's not good, Bob. <laughs> that's for yeah. sure. But for, yeah. f that's kind of the reason I have to say that I use PayPal when I buy things online now, because I've just oh, been- Oh, yeah, you know, I never think to use PayPal, but that's a really I just good decided point. to just do everything through them. Like, I, I used to just abhor PayPal because it was like the worst, mm -hmm. but for some reason, it's Feels not since I went line. freelance and people started, started invoicing people through it and all this, it's like, it's become my own little other portal. And you get an extra layer of protection. Yeah, and then PayPal. if something goes awry, I can just ask PayPal to block the call like I would my bank, or block the thing like I would my bank. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> any any final words on OnePlus before we adjourn and move on to a review? No. Meeting okay. adjourned. Meeting Boom. Adjourned. <laughs> uh, this right here in front of me, this beast, is the Google Home Max. It is so big you can't even see my laptop behind it. That's how big it is. Uh, so this is for, this is the Google Home that you get if A, you have $400 burning a hole in your pocket and B, you want a Google Home that sounds really good. Let's do it. Play me some music. Okay, what, well, what song do you want? Because um, it's, it's probably best to like judge a song you know really well, right? Something with a thump and beat maybe. Um, Oh, I didn't realize if you're going in the catacombs <laughs> yeah, to find this. Catacombs. I just thought you'd have some something off the top. Uh, well, while you look for that, how about I talk a little bit about it? Play some Annie Lennox. Uh, huh? No. Uh, oh, I thought you said Justin Bieber and I stopped listening. Um, obviously, this is big. <laughs> <laughs> that was Burke, by the way. And of course, chance. he would recommend <laughs> Justin Bieber. Uh, it's big. It booms. It has awesome sound. Uh, and, you know, if having a really great stereo speaker with your Google Home is your priority, this is obviously the the one to get. It has assistant built in, uh, dual 4.5 woofers, custom woofers. tweeters. Uh, you can actually, if you have $800 burning a hole in your pocket, you can get two of these, sync them up so that one acts as the left speaker, the other acts as the right. You can get that extreme stereo separation if you like. Um, there are LED lights on the front that light up through the fabric, which I actually found to be really useful because we had it set up in our living room and... You know, we're firing off commands and instead of having to look on the top like the regular Google Home to see it little swirling thing or whatever, this you could see it from clear in another room. It's really bright. You knew it was listening for you. If it heard you do the call command, the, the wake command, because it's so loud <laughs> that you would do the wake command and it wouldn't hear you. So you're basically yelling at it to try and get over the volume that it's putting out. So that's a little bit of a challenge. Can I have it say a song? Yes. Oh, good game. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> it, it, that's not a command. Oh, apparently it. Is this what you wanted to play? Oh, okay. Play 
One More Time by Daft Punk. Oh. All right. One More Time by Daft Punk. Why is, on why is it a music. male voice? That's really loud, get, by the way. Uh, and it, you have you have no idea. Um, and we'll wait till it booms in. Yeah. You can choose male or female voice through the Google Home app. Okay. Right. Uh, but yeah, by default, it was it was the male voice. I thought that was interesting. Interesting. Sorry. Here we go. Oh, well, no. no, it's a long. Oh time. dang it! Oh, this is a yeah. radio edit. Fifteen seconds. There we go. Okay. Sounds all right. It sounds better if you're in front of it. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, so Ron. The show's over now. We're going to go have a dance party. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You could have a dance party with the Google Home Max. And that's the point, but that's the advertising that they were showing us, right? They were showing all the 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 cool the cool young people in the their nice kids. fashionable clothes. Diplo, right? It was Diplo, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Diplo. Yes, it was right. Diplo, who, by the yep. way, does with Justin Bieber, or maybe that's Major Lazer. I don't know. Why does, every, why does everything point back to Justin because Bieber? Because he's a big pop star. Oh. We can't do anything about it. I'm sorry. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Anyways, yeah. I actually really liked my time with the Google Home Max. It, obviously, the top is touch sensitive. So that's you, a fantastic so, speaker. Uh, it sounds really good. That's yeah. great. What, what, here's what I really like about this, because, okay, we, we just got our, our yard done right yes, so we want did. to spend all this time out in our yard we don't have a stereo system like channeled out there or anything i almost feel like that's old school now like this is what i would want i would want a speaker with assistant embedded into it just to because, a jam then box. I can just, because then i can take this out and i don't have to go to it and do any control True. things like it it controls music in the way that i'm used to controlling music now which is with my voice because we have Google Home in every single room in our house. Did you know that they are also making outdoor mesh Wi-Fi nodes just for this kind oh, of thing? I didn't, so that but if I do you now. Need to bring, Dang it. If you need to, I saw some at CES. So if you need to bring this outside into the backyard, you can. it'll work. Uh, Corey, would you spend $400 on a really, really big Google Home <laughs> speaker? Um, so question, um, yeah. I saw in their advertisement that they had like a record player. Yeah. Did, can you actually plug things into it? Does it have, um, you can. the Chromecast sort of thing too? Okay. Uh, it does. Yeah. It is Chromecast capable. It has a 3.5 millimeter, uh, input audio input jack in the back. So you can, can um, you show it in the camera. Oh, uh, I could if I, Oh, is this super heavy? Oh yeah. This thing well, is this good. Thing. We have to tell people about this. Let me move your laptop. So there's USB. Oh, sorry. Does that does that plug come out, or is that hard in it? No, it comes out. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so it, you can remove that. There's oh, no right. battery in here, so you couldn't like remove that and have it be battery powered. That would be awesome, sure. actually. So that's USB C uh, or micro. A, that is a USB C port, so you could plug in. Uh, what did I find on that? Because I was like, what would you need that for? You could you can get an Ethernet adapter to get faster internet directly to it through the USB C what? port. Fascinating. Uh, and then you could plug any audio source in here from like a line, you know, through the line level. And that right notch here. up there, what is that notch? This is the mute. Sorry, mute. Okay. Okay. It, oh, cool. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you for telling so me. You, so, you, so you could plug in a record player with a... With, with that's, it's not an RCA jack though. So you would yeah. need... Right. Oh man, this is hurting my head. Yeah, so. I know. So, so yeah, the the three point five millimeter input is nice to have, but you're probably going to do some gymnastics in order to get you know a record player right. in there. You're going to have to have some just like a phono amplifier and and. Yeah, because right now I have a huge uh, set of records and yeah. uh, also. Um, yeah. Uh, speakers, so it'd be nice to replace it with something like this. Yeah, uh, but totally. It's not like it's not really what I need there. Um, yeah, I mean, this wouldn't be. I, I would say this probably isn't ideal if if you're bringing a record player in. Their their advertised their promotional material shows this with a record player. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, they're touting that as like uh, an obvious you know thing that you can do with Chromecast it. So it's possible. Audio. Um, yeah, Chromecast Just directly Chromecast from your record audio, player. <laughs> and then yeah. you could hook it up another $35. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I will say that like for the flexibility that this gives you, like $400 is not an inexpensive, like that's not cheap necessarily, no. but there are other speakers like this. The Sonos one is in the same price mm -hmm. range. It's probably the, the close comparable, uh, Isn't that thing you know, speaker. small compared 
I, I don't know. I didn't side by side them. I, I haven't played around with it myself. Um, to the Google. But, you know, it's really flexible, right? Like, I really liked being able to just plug this in, throw it outside. My kids are out there playing, and from across the yard, they can say, hey, G, play, blah, blah, blah. And it totally did it because they love to do dance parties. That's just Sonos what they love to do. is 200 bucks, by the way. The mm. Sonos one? So yeah, so it's half the price okay. of this one. Wow. And maybe I'm getting it wrong because there is another one that is on par with this. It's the Play One. That's what it is. It's the Sonos mm. Play One. Mm. And it is, is that right? No. No, they have Play One, Play Three, and Play Five. I swear there is a Sonos Five. It's the is Five. What they... That's $500. Okay. That's what it is then. My apology. Yep. And it even looks very similar. So it's $500. So this is cheaper than that. So I don't Did know. you create any groups um, with yeah. like other homes in the house? Or Absolutely. It, it ties right into the, the home network that you already have. It just becomes another speaker in there. And, uh, you know, when you have a party, play in all rooms. And this thing's going to be playing in sync with everything else. And that's Pretty in cool. sync the band, Ron. Staring <laughs> up my heart. <laughs> Maybe that was directed at Flo. And then I walk into the party and I turn around and leave the party. <laughs> like, oh, it's going to be that kind of party. Oh, it's one of Flo's throwback parties. <laughs> Not good. Not so, good, Bob. Anyways, I don't know if I'm spending $400 of my own money on the Google Home Max, but I have enjoyed my time with it. It's going to be really hard to adjust to my lowly Google Home that is an, our normal uh, living room speaker after having this in there. So maybe I will get one. I don't know. But I really liked it a lot. Nobody and it's $400. Knows. Oh, and by the way, we probably shouldn't wrap this up without mentioning that Google Home in mm. general mm -hmm. has been having some issues. Yes, a lot it of has. people reporting that the Google Home, I think initially they thought it was isolated to the max, but it seems to be all of them uh, are killing some Wi Fi connections, basically overloading routers with thousands of packets at once. Uh, initially, they thought it was only affecting TP-Link routers, but it seems like it's affecting more than that. I have not experienced this flow. I have, you? have. You have? Yes. On and off, constantly. Every day, it's just been falling off wow. the network, the Wi-Fi. just suddenly. And the Chromecast, for instance, last night I was watching, yesterday I was watching YouTube TV, and um, YouTube TV will just stutter all the time. Oh, so it'll stutter. Good. Then I'll look on my phone and I'll see my phone has lost Wi-Fi connection. I'll get the little question mark in the Wi-Fi, which is I'm still at home. I didn't go anywhere. I'm still on the couch. Yeah, yeah. it's been it's been annoying. Or I've woken up in the morning and I've had to repair the Google Homes um, and some other instances. The Amazon devices fell off the network. The Nest security cams have fallen off the network. I've just been having... a up the wazoo problems with Wi-Fi since hmm. doing this whole IoT thing. So I, I have not experienced this at all. My Amazon device just doesn't uh, get on the Wi-Fi anymore. It's just constantly complaining that it's lost its oh. connection. I have to go configure it. Yeah, so that's, that's really frustrating because my Wi-Fi is just dropping. Yeah. But that's I haven't had to reconfigure the homes yet. Those seem to just be able to hook back up no problem. Yeah, and our TD, uh, uh, Victor, uh, also raised his hand when you mentioned that about the Amazon Echo doing that. So is doing that for you as well? Yeah, I I thought it was just me. Yeah, <laughs> We're all suffering together. We're, yes. Isn't that the best feeling when you find out that you're not alone? That's yes. like, oh, yes. I'm, I'm having this. Yeah, everyone's having this problem. We're yeah. all suffering together. Uh, um, I think it's worth noting that with this, this is a new device category. Wi-Fi router, routers weren't exactly configured. I mean, they have been configured for this sort of thing, but I am just imagining network traffic, everything that's going on. I don't even like... I need to learn how to look into this, how to fix it, how to make it better for myself because this is putting me into a new realm of networking that I was not planning on venturing into. Yeah. It's supposed to be easy. I'm not supposed to have these problems. Well, not too long ago, no one would have ever said networking is easy. And that's that's like... That's and our change in, in thought about this has changed in the last couple of years. I feel like you know there's been this big push on getting these Wi-Fi mesh networks, like you know the Google um, Wi-Fi, Google Wi-Fi, which is what I'm having and, problems with and stuff. And and you know the whole purpose of that is spread out the Wi-Fi with a mesh network, but make it really easy so anyone can do it. And prior to that, like I always wanted to do it, but I I'm horrible at networking, and so 
it just seemed like it was way over my head. So it's it kind of stinks when suddenly it all comes crumbling down. What do yeah, you do? I really like the <laughs> towards easier stuff to use because I actually had a CCNA for a little bit because they made me at Cisco get one and I just never really understood. I don't know. It's just never fun to network things. So yeah. not having to think about it in general is pretty great. Yep. Agreed. All right. Flow, last in hardware. What you got? Well, we've got another little teaser, I guess, from what's coming out of <laughs> Samsung's camp late, maybe later this year, maybe next year, maybe five years from now. So reportedly, <laughs> the company showed off its foldable, foldable smartphone prototype to lucky VIPs at CES. Um, that foldable display was a 7.3 inch OLED that folds inward at a curvature of 0.1 millimeter and outward at a curvature of 0.5 millimeter. So basically the 0.1 millimeter is essentially folding paper. Uh, Samsung wow. is testing the limits of the display by bending it a dozen times per day up to 200,000 folds. Um, imagine display origami, or at least that's what I am imagining. <laughs> Lots of cranes being made. Um, DJ Co, who heads up Samsung, said to expect it later. So next year actually is when we can expect it. Samsung also plans to announce the Galaxy S9 at Memorial Congress next month, happening in Barcelona, Spain. Barcelona. Design is expected to be similar to the S8. Naturally, this is another uh, iterative, mm -hmm. this is the iterative year. Um, EV Leaks has already shared info on the expected release schedule. So friend of the show, EV Leaks, showed <laughs> off that it's launching on February 26th with pre-orders beginning March 1st and ship release date March 16th, the day before St. Patty's Day. So when you are going out to your bar crawl, you'll have your new Samsung phone. Lucky you. If to take pictures, although you probably don't want to share those photos. Yeah, can, can, maybe don't. Can we not let the S9 distract us from a foldable smartphone prototype? I feel like we just <laughs> blew right past that. And we all know that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> Did you see? So, Victor, I have a, a link in there for the patent. And if you fold, if, if you fold down... Or ah. down below the fold, uh, you'll oh, see. Oh, that's genius. Look at this. And uh, oh. who knows if this is actually it, but I mean, it kind of seems to fit the bill and as far as the 7.3 kind of stretched OLED display. You know uh, what? You, you know yeah. what this reminds me of? A well, a couple of things. First off, it's seven degrees in wherever they did the prototype. Um, secondly, <laughs> Um, it's probably Celsius, I know, whatever. Um, secondly, th this, the the sketch with the blue screen, and uh, if you scroll up, you can see it. Um, this reminds me a lot of a PDA I had from Sony back in like 2002 or 2003. That was like a long PDA and it had a, it had a lid. And um, I, don't, I, I don't think it was a dual display PDA, but it just, it almost looks exactly like this design, which I mm -hmm. think is fascinating. So, um, oh my God, I want a flexible display so badly. The return of the PDA. My understanding yeah. is this would be very helpful in a business travel situation or a present, or maybe Corey could really benefit from this for her talks. She could, you could bring a display like this with you, unfold it, and then do your whole presentation and not have to worry if the venue where you're at is, has everything equipped <laughs> for you. For you. <laughs> yeah. Could, could, could you do yeah, a, would you be interested in a flexible display, Corey? Sure. Um, I'm not quite sure what I would use it for yet, but um, <laughs> I do like the idea of using it as a portable projector um, and just need to be a large enough one to kind of like stick on the wall. I believe LG has a rollable one too that they showed off. Well, LG, I believe, had a TV. A rolled up TV. Sorry, that's what I was But I mean, but that's, but that's an interesting correlation to draw, right? Like we're seeing more and more of this in displays. And in LG's case, it was like a large format TV, like a 50 or 65 inch or something like that. And yeah. literally there's a box down at the base of it and the TV would just roll up into a roll into the box and then come Like a out. slap bracelet. It, oh, but, wow. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much like a slap bracelet. Uh, um, this is where displays are going right now. By the way, thanks to the chat room, they pointed out I, were, I was remembering the Sony Clie PDA and oh, yes. uh, Victor, actually in our chat, you can see I found an image of the exact PDA that I had back in 2002. Um, that I thought was like, this is the future. The CLIA, okay. They're, the, they're, the CLIA, the PEG, P-E-G-NX-7-O-V. This is the future right here. 
Yeah, that was the oh future. Oh my gosh. This That's the, way that more was... futuristic than some of the stuff we got going on now. TBH. I know it had a ca- it had a camera, it had a keyboard, it had a, uh, 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 you know, like a button keyboard, like a hardware hardware keyboard. No, wait a minute, you had this? I had this. Yep. Oh wow. Okay. Yep. This reminds me of a laptop that I had. So it was um, forget exactly what it was running, but it had a Windows Vista Business and it laid flat, and I could write on it like a tablet. But then it's also the laptop too, with its own cool. screen. <laughs> wow, it's all coming back around, isn't it? This is like it's like fashion. Yeah, totally. It's all <laughs> cyclical. Bell bottoms and soon multiple. we're going to be typing on Commodore sixty four keyboards again. We oh, already do with all the cherry, all the cherry keyboards. <laughs> I guess so. There's there's a there's a retro movement on uh, sure. like the old cli- the return of the clicky keyboards and all that kind of stuff. I love the clicky keyboard. All right. So yes. Uh, let's take a break. All right. Let's do it. Uh, let's thank another sponsor, and we want to thank WordPress for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. And listen. We all, a lot of us, a lot of you li- listeners, a lot of us here on the show, we all like to make things. And we know that uh, when you make things and when you build something new, something that people can connect with, it's a lot easier when you've got the right tools. And let me tell you, WordPress is such a great tool to use. And that's why we're so excited to have them on as a sponsor. Uh, I use WordPress.com every day. And let me tell you, whether you're looking to create a personal blog, a business site, or both, creating your website on, website on WordPress.com has never been easier, and it helps other people find you, remember you, and connect with you. You don't need any experience. You don't need to hire anyone. You don't need to hire a coder or designer or anything like that. WordPress.com guides you through the entire process from start to finish. Uh, WordPress takes care of the technical side, so it's super easy to get your site up and running, and you want it to look good, right? We all want want We want to present ourselves out to the world. We want to look as good as we can. Thankfully, WordPress.com has hundreds of beautiful designs to choose from. Uh, I get I get lost in picking templates. I, it's 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 a, this is a confession I'm going to make. I will go to WordPress and browse through all the all the beautiful templates and install them and see how my site will look in it. Uh, it's a hard time picking. It's like picking mm-hmm. the right outfit. You want to pick the right template. WordPress is amazing. Um, but it, when you set up your site on WordPress.com, you'll also get a built-in search engine optimization and social sharing. Uh, their business plan lets you access hundreds of plugins and themes. And if you ever need help, their customer support team is made up of WordPress experts eager to help you get the most from your website. They're available to, available to help you 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and weekends too. Plans just start at $4 a month. And listen, 29% of websites run on WordPress. Just take a moment to let that sink in. 29% of the websites are on WordPress. It's clearly they're getting something right, and you can get something right too. So get started today. Get 50% off any new plan purchase. Go to WordPress.com slash all about Android. Create your website and find the plan that's right for you. That's WordPress.com slash all about Android for 15% off your brand new website. And we thank WordPress for their support and making us look good on the web. Thank you, WordPress. Thank you, WordPress. I will admit, just before we jump into apps, that I ate a cookie. Yeah, I know you Aww. did, and I was like, oh. And it was Thanks really for good. Offering me make, one. So so jealous. Make sure <laughs> to stick around after the credits and you'll see what yes. cookie I ate. This is a good one. <laughs> All right, it's time to jump into our apps segment. <laughs> So getting lost in the holiday hubbub and then the CES hubbub, I wanted to call out the fact that there's a new app from Google called Files Go. And I thought this uh, just I I assume most of you heard of it. I don't know if you guys on the show have heard of it or not. Uh, But when Google launches a a file explorer app, I feel like we need to take notice of this. Yeah. Um, And not only is it a file explorer app, but it is also a very handy uh, help you manage your files on your phone space storage app. Um, so much so that like I'm looking at it right now and it's telling me, hey, you've got temporary, you got 792 meg of temporary app files. Get rid of them. You got, you know, um, I've got 1.26 gigabyte of large files as it calls, which is very general. One of my favorite <laughs> ones, one, one of my favorite ones that it, uh, that it highlighted for me was low resolution media and memes. Yeah. Memes. And, Yes, memes. It's identifying what are memes and suggesting I free up 15 megabyte of uh, low res media and and memes. It's also identifying duplicate files, which I think is fascinating, um, as well as reminding me that I have, I have over two gig of files uh, in WhatsApp media folder. 
because I chat a lot on WhatsApp and that's why. Um, this is great. It also helps you find unused apps. Um, and then, you know, aside from the whole storage thing, there's a straight up file, um, a, a, a file explorer that allows you to access your downloads folder, uh, your apps, images, videos, audios, documents, etc. cetera. Um, pretty, good, pretty good app, pretty good app. I would like to access the file system completely. Like for example, um, I, I, I haven't been able to track down the screenshots folder. Uh, that I have on this on, on this, so I go to another one for that. It might be under images, it might be all uh, mixed in there, but oh yeah, it is. It's under images. There it is. See, I found I found it already. This app has got everything. So uh, very cool job on Google. Um, yeah. So files go. If you don't got it, this this quickly became a must you know must have for every uh, when I install a phone. You know, like I'm like, oh, I need files go now. So yeah, you, you missed a really big feature of this actually, and it works really well. Is this transfer? Oh, the wireless transfer. Yeah. The wireless yeah. transfer. It sets like AirDrop. up. It, yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's like AirDrop, but it's a little bit more purposeful. It's like each person, yes, has to have files go installed in order to do it, but it uh, transfers via Bluetooth file mm -hmm. transfer. It's actually really quick, um, and yeah, it's it's really easy to use. I would just tap send. The other phone receive. It would recognize that we're in the same space and give me a prompt to hit OK. You know, select all the files to send and and go for it. And Corey, I'm curious to ask you about if you are familiar at or if you've heard of this app because from what I understand, Google has been doing a lot of work on their apps, and this I think is 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 part of part of that work to make it better for the devices that that are released in emerging markets because for example you know this is very focused on storage space and and freeing up the space in your device a lot of devices in emerging markets like we were talking about earlier you know might be lower cost devices and in many cases that comes at the cost of storage space <laughs> there isn't a whole lot of storage space uh, also lower you know lower bandwidth uh, capabilities in certain areas and so this would be an app that Google has made uh, partially to allow those devices to be a little more resilient uh, in those areas. Have you kind of seen some of these efforts uh, by Google to cater to the emerging markets in that regard? Well, I haven't been watching it because I've been on my sabbatical, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I believe they called <laughs> the new uh, effort at Google I.O. something Go, like Android Go. So yep. it sounds like this is in that umbrella. So it's definitely a welcome addition and it's just more usable in general to be able to figure out where all your files are. Like I do, you know, obviously manage my files now, but it's kind of annoying. So yeah. Uh, it's nice that they finally have a canonical one. Well, yeah, and if you look at the third-party file managers, that I mean, you can find all shapes and sizes of of apps. Obviously, developers have tackled this problem for years, but a lot of those apps are just like do everything apps, and you open them up, and I mean, you get lost in the amount of features that are there. Which, for some people, that's really useful. For other people, like I just want to like you know, quickly trim my files and reduce the space because I got a warning that says I'm low on space. Uh, and I think this this really seems to do that very well. Mm -hmm. So, Like that button in Google Photos. Yeah, exactly. Free up it's like that button, but in an updated. app for everything. It's yeah. kind of what files go is. Uh, Duo... We, uh, we, you may or may not have ever used Duo to make video calls. Hey, uh, my, I've actually used it a good Yeah, one. my mm -hmm. iOS friend, my best iOS friend just came on Duo. Nice. Just to chat with me. I actually really like Duo a lot. The more I use it, the more I want to use it. Um, and there's a new update that enables Duo calls on devices that don't even have the app installed. So Yeah, that's uh, how you do it. That, yeah, there you go. Uh, when Allo was uh, first introduced about a year and a half ago, uh, it did this right up, right from the get-go. It, it enabled a feature called App Preview Messaging. Mm -hmm. Google had said at the time that it was going to open it up to third-party developers. We haven't really seen that very much, but that's what Duo is doing here. So if you are on Duo and you call an you know the right Android device, uh, it will actually allow you to make the call, and that person, even though they don't have Duo installed, will still get the whole experience. And then when they're done with that call... It'll take them to the Play Store and say, "Do you want to install this for future how are calls?" You how are you video messaging me right I know. now? This Wouldn't is that weird. be kind of weird, though? I mean, how did you get my FaceTime? That's not FaceTime. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of strange that it would just appear though, and you'd suddenly no, see the knock knock that's video. That's how technology should work, darn it! It just works. It doesn't matter. <laughs> as long as it's not off putting, because I could also see someone being really freaked out about the fact that their phone suddenly has that person's face on it live in real time and they didn't do I anything to enable it. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, I really like duo, but um, I don't think they have it on web at this point too. They do have an aloe web. 
Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I don't think that there is a web version of Duo. Um, that would be really yeah. helpful if they did because the video is really nice. I like knock, knock, but I don't like holding my phone if I'm going to do a long call. And because most of my friends and family and loved ones do not live where I live right now, just because I moved across the country last year, um, I do a lot of video calling. So yeah. it's really frustrating to hold it. Yeah, I, I, I was just in the airport the other day and I saw people FaceTiming and I was uh, grousing to my wife about how I can't stand FaceTime or Duo and all that sort of stuff. And and she's like, just because you don't do it doesn't mean other people can. I'm like, right. And she's like, and then she's like, well, let's get to the bottom of this. Why don't you like it? And it's for that reason. Like, hold, like we have this vision of the Jetsons where we can like have a video call and the person will be there and all that sort of stuff. And in the reality, you have to hold it at this awkward angle. Uh, people do it while they're walking and it's all that movement and the mm. and the, the wind and all that sort of stuff. You get too close and it's like, and it's just, it's it's really just distracting. And I don't know how we saw, like we want to have video conferencing. That's a great thing. The desktop does it great. Like we're doing now with Skype and I've got a camera and all this sort of stuff, but from the phone, I'm never happy with the angle I'm seeing on, for coming back to me. I can't imagine they're happy with seeing my fat chin. So it's just, yeah, it's, just, it's not there yet. That's my problem. We need yeah. another paradigm. I don't know why. My favorite so. is when they FaceTime in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not good. I've it's always never... my favorite. So I was just sitting here and I thought, might as well call you. No, that it's listen. I we this is a whole thing we could have a discussion about society's use of phones. I'm just saying, phones are everywhere, literally everywhere. I think we've solved this problem when my phone can be on the desk the way it is 90% of the time, and the video call is actually a holographic projection above the phone, Help and I'm looking one. at the person talking to them. Hey, help. how's it going? See, wouldn't that be awesome? That's easy, right? Sure, yes. sure. Sure. It should be, but it's not. Flo, what's the next story? Well, the next story is a bunch of selfies from us because like <laughs> the rest of you on the internet, we also contributed our face to Google's lovely arts and culture app, um, which will snap your selfie and then find an image in the vast library of art that exists in the world and, well, basically tell you what you, you resemble. Looking, who you look most like. Um, we Did, all took... I guess I gotta say, I ha I mean, we, a lot of time these like you know meme type apps really run with it. Yeah, but I'm the this king one of ran, Spain. This, this one ran like <laughs> wildfire. The king of Sweden. Yeah, I'm the really king did. of Sweden. So yeah. Scandinavia, I'm coming for you and your people. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have next? Uh, yeah, no matter what I do, I end up with this guy I with a really loved, big nose. I love that you got this one because I wow. feel like this is you in an alternate life. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm wondering if anyone got more than like a fifty or sixty percent match. This was fifty five percent. So that's pretty good, I guess. Uh, what about Corey's? Let's see here. That would be the next one. Uh, we're almost there. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it's linked in the doc. We've got all four of them. There we go. There we go. Ooh. Ah, nice. It's a portrait of H.I. Rorick. Rorich? Probably Rorick. There was Rorich. about four old women that gave me. <laughs> <laughs> they all had like white or gray hair. Uh, there, there was no piercing though in that art. That's a, that was a Russian theosophist, by the way. And there's Ron. Portrait of Portrait, a goldsmith. Portrait of a goldsmith. Yes. Forty-four so. percent match. Wow. Ron is a goldsmith. That is interesting. There's, yeah. there's so many of these uh, racing across. I know, will say I have, point, I've been learning. I didn't really look inside the arts and culture app before. And I realize now that this is the app that you want to download before you go on a big trip somewhere. Maybe you want to go look at museums. Like this is a great way to familiarize yourself with the works that are being showcased to kind of look a little bit on the history of the artists. It's a cool app. Yeah. No doubt. Google was very smart to implement this feature, though, obviously, because this is like the number one app uh, in some of the, the app stores. Here, I'll show you how it works. So is your portrait in a museum? Get started. Uh, I accept. Allow. There I am. Maybe it's gonna me give being you that guy there. again. Okay. There we go. It thinks a little bit, I'm assuming. Did it not? <laughs> it locks up my phone. Oh. Smoke pours out of the battery case. Okay. Apparently, it's not compatible with the OnePlus 5T. Well, whatever. There you go. You get to look at my, my selfie. Lucky, <laughs> lucky you. Someday, it'll be on the wall of the museum. It did, yeah, it didn't need to find art. This is art. 
Don't you agree? No. Uh, anyways, <laughs> moving on from that because that didn't work. I'm happy called, that wasn't my app in the arena. Howl at the moon. <laughs> I've heard that one before, Flo. Oh, turn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that flow. Uh, real quick before we get into the arena, we got an email from Mark Prestash, who, and I'm going to summarize it because it's a really long email, uh, but I appreciate, Mark, that you sent this in. Basically, he heard me mention the Kindle Fire tablet for the kids edition and how they have a uh, no questions asked return policy that Amazon offers that. Mm -hmm. And he basically wrote out his whole scenario about how it was everything but no questions asked. After nine months, it stopped charging. He called customer service. He was on the phone a total of four hours over three different days to get it fixed every step of the way. Um, you know, he was, he says he was met with resistance, questions, hassles. At one point he was told it was past its return date. And, and I, and he says he had to show the representative on the Amazon website that they offer the two years of coverage for fixing or replacing. And basically, he ended up emailing Jeff Bezos, uh, which apparently you can too, Jeff at Amazon.com. He got a reply back the next day from one of Jeff's assistants, many, I'm assuming, assistants, uh, who said that Jeff had read the email and wanted to make things right. He was given $100 credit towards the next purchase, and ad they admitted that the hassle-free, no-questions-asked policy so clearly displayed on the website was not, in fact, what he had experienced. Uh, so they made good on that, but he did want everyone to know like his experience was so bad it really tainted his how he sees amazon and he just hopes that no one in the android all about android community ever has the same experience that he had with their uh tablet um so little little psa there for you it doesn't always go well even though they claim that it will but one final thought he, do, he does say just like ron when I was in the market for an Android tablet a few months ago, I purchased the Asus ZenPad 3S 10 tablet. I absolutely love the tablet. No regrets about buying it. Uh, Ron, if you haven't bought a case or a Bluetooth keyboard, uh, he highly recommends the FinT brand Bluetooth keyboard and case from Amazon, which is $30, uh, 4.5 star rating, 200 reviews. So there you go, Ron. Not bad. Not bad. I, I did buy a case. I didn't get one with the keyboard, but uh, I did look at that one. So I, I, I hear you. So. <laughs> So there we go. A uh, little PSA for you. Uh, think about that when you buy that tablet. Thank you, Mark, for sending that in. Uh, real quick before we get into the arena, thank the final sponsor of today's episode. This episode is brought to you by Hover. Hover, building your online brand, uh, has never been more important than it is right now. Your online identity begins with your domain name. And uh, you, know, you want to show the online community who you are, what you're passionate about, and it's easy when you register a domain name with Hover. Buying a domain name is the first and the biggest step to building your personal brand online. Uh, so if you're interested in, in theater or wine or whatever your interests may actually be, Hover has hundreds of extensions for you to choose from to really kind of uh, customize uh, what you get. .tech dot network, dot security, dot software, uh, dot CEO, dot marketing, wine, golf, photo, you name it. You can go there, you can take a look, and you can find something that's super customized to exactly what you're looking for. And it, you know, it'll help you make it'll help you stand out. With Hover, you'll also get a personalized email that matches your domain and further supports your online identity. The best in class customer support team. A clean user interface. The whole the whole experience is super clean. Over 400 domain extensions to choose from. So it's going to take a little time, but you'll find the exact right one, uh, and you'll stand out as a result. No upsells, free who is privacy, and check out Hover's Connect feature, which allows you to connect your domain name uh, to any host or website builder with a few simple clicks. Start building your online brand today. Go to hover.com slash twit and get 10% off your first purchase. That's hover.com slash twit. And we thank Hover for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. And now it is that time. It's time we jump into the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android. Arena. Just realize he's saying only one lives. Yep. What, what, uh, so many enter, only one. Only one lives. lives. Yeah. Only one lives. Dang. Yeah. 
Dang. Two will enter, one will, yeah, anyway. So uh, this is the embarrassing part of the show I was not looking forward to. Uh, well, oh. Jason, why don't we look at the results of last week? Uh, okay. Which just shows that I think people voting don't actually watch the show sometimes. <laughs> Let's Maybe. see here. So, <laughs> or they didn't care, Ron. They just Possibly. thought it needed to win. Uh, smart Possibly. wallpapers apparently wins with 44%, even though it was I'm a DQ'd. repeat. It's a DQ. Is it a DQ? Is that it's it a goes? DQ. Yeah, yeah, no. Wade County already made the call. It's a DQ. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so even though it, it won with 44%, it will not register. I mean, maybe it registers as last place. I'm not really quite sure. But Plaid comes in uh, the new first at 36%. And then mine was Kodak Real Film 20%. 20% of our fans are dedicated to real film and not digital in the movie theater. So there you go. So so what that means is, and I believe that the ruling is a DQ is zero points as if you're not even on the show. Oh, so, okay. Um, which is, which I, is, is fair the way it should be. So with that, Jason, you were sitting pretty in first place after two weeks with six points. I've still got five points. The guests have five points. And Flo's got two points. So That could change and usually does. Um, week to week, especially this early on in yeah. the year. So, should I go first since I was DQ'd? Yes. I zero points? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I believe that's so how I, it worked. Mm, I clean. wanted, to, I wanted to rebound with a strong app this week since I DQ'd last week, and uh, I bring to you Proton VPN, unlimited free VPN made by Proton Mail. Um, and if you aren't familiar with Proton Mail or Proton VPN, the Proton Group. Uh, these are a group of developers that met at CERN in Switzerland, and first they created an email platform uh, called Proton Mail, and now they've rolled out Proton Proton VPN, which actually came out uh, about six months ago, I think, for iOS, and now just launched on Android. And here's here's the big thing: uh, if you're worried about privacy, if you're worried about you know uh, anybody snooping on your device or what you're doing, uh, you want to get a VPN, which is a virtual private network. Um, it will protect your privacy. It's going to hide your IP address. It lets you browse securely, even if you're on a public Wi-Fi connection, and it lets you visit blocked or censored websites if you happen to be on a school network or a or some other work network or something like that that is blocking stuff on their Wi-Fi. Um, but this is why it's super interesting. Um, this is the only VPN service that has no – it's free, has no ads, no malware, no bandwidth limits, and they're not secretly selling your user data. Um, there is a uh, free service, the base level, which Jason signed up for here with this, um, that lets you use their VPN services. It is limited in terms of what it can do. You can upgrade to a paid plan, which gives you more servers and more features and things like that. But if you don't want to pay anything and you just want secure, a secure connection, this is all you need. Um, and what's amazing is that they're not going to sell your data and also they're not going to limit your bandwidth, which is that's how other VPN makers get you. They say, hey, we're going to give you this free VPN, but you can only transfer, you know, X gigabytes of data or megabyte or whatever. But Proton VPN, they're from Switzerland, which are neutral. They want to protect your uh, privacy. So um, not only that, it's a real slick app. Um, it shows you the countries you're connecting to, to where, you know, you can choose the server that you want to route your VPN through. Um, some great visualizations, some great use of material design. You can set up different profiles based off where you are or what, you know, what kind of setup you want. Um, honestly, if you use a VPN and or if you have need of a VPN, I think this is your new choice. This is your new client. Uh, it's just it's really really impressive. Um, it's super secure. Um, they're they're using uh, IKE v, uh, the IKE v2 protocol. Um, so all your passwords and your data are staying completely encrypted. Um, and yeah, it's just it's good stuff. So uh, Pro Proton VPN just I think changed the game when it comes to VPNs. So. Right on. Proton VPN Unlimited Free VPN by Proton Mail. Yep. Very nice. Good alternative. People get somewhat religious when it comes to their choices for VPN. So <laughs> everybody has their reasons for, for either paying for a VPN service or feeling comfortable, feeling confident using a free service. So I, I suppose everyone do your homework for yourself because everybody kind of chooses anyways uh, what they feel comfortable with when it comes to the, their privacy online. Uh, this looks like a really good good option. Yeah. yeah. I, li I like the idea, too, that it's, you know, sometimes VPN can be a little a little confusing depending on the, the, 
service that it's, you use and they're like can you super, can pick random or do you just want the fastest and jump right into it yeah it can be super daunting and yeah. they, they they made the like once you sign up for a proton mail account and you get up on their system um you don't need to put any private data you just choose a username and a password it's really easy um but once you do that uh, it's smooth sailing and it's free and it's and they they don't pressure you to go to any of the paid plans. The people who need the paid plans are going to pay for it. Um, but if you are just want to protect yourself a little and want to do it for a low cost, totally great. So. Awesome, awesome. All right. Uh, so that is that, and uh, that is Proton. That in this case is Proton VPN. Um, I'll go next um, because I mean I was also a loser. Last week. It's okay. Uh, we can admit sheesh. it. I was a loser last week. Oh, I don't week. know if I like this terminology. I, I was the lose. first loser. <laughs> I was the second You're loser. All winners in my heart. Now Thank stop. You. I appreciate it. All right. I'm bringing a game in here real quick. It was it was kind of a game week for me, and I had a number of games that I was looking at. And this is totally a game to pick up when you got just a few minutes to kill here and there. And they have plans to have... Uh, person versus person uh, play sometime in the future, which I think will make this even more fun. It's called String.io. And if you've ever played any of these IO games, a, a lot of them kind of follow a very simil similar format. I'll go ahead and jump into it here. And basically, what you have is a play field that is, you know, a number of, of well, you'll see, it's, it's kind of, here, let me get to the right level here. It's kind of a grid and you move around. It, what I like about this game is it's kind of like that old uh, that old school arcade game Quicks where you try and get larger areas to claim your own and you, you you're basically just moving around trying to get a larger surface area and that includes reclaiming the space that other players have out on the playing field. If they run into your line while you're out there, similar to Quicks, uh, you will be done as this random professional user just did to me uh, and you can just jump into another game and uh, continue on but you want to continue drawing these god i'm doing horrible you want to continue drawing it out so that you get even larger spaces and as you kind of work through the game there's different challenges like getting a certain percentage of the play field as yours killing a certain percentage of other players um and there's you know there's a whole kind of uh market you know, place that you can run down as well if you so choose. But it's, you know, there's really not a whole lot of, of depth. It's just kind of a fun game mechanic. And as is the case with a lot of these IO games, um, at some point these will actually be controllable by other people. So I could actually have online play where I'm playing playing against a bunch of live players in real time here. And that just kind of takes it up to another level when you know that all of these players are actually real and not just robots inside your machine. Uh, but it's a cool little game. It's called String.io. And, uh, you know, it's free with ads. I think it's $1.99 if you want to remove the ads, which I suggest that you do. And, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I like it a lot. String.io. Check it out for yourself. All right. So, Corey, I have your app installed. I should preface this by saying that um, there was a time when this ad, the, the ad, the app uh, Headspace was a sponsor of this network. So they've definitely been on the network before. We've never brought them into the arena, though. So why don't you talk about what you really like about Headspace and I'll show it off while you do that. Sure. Yeah, I was actually really surprised to not see it in the list. Um, I've been using it off and on for a year and a half and pretty seriously for the last year. Um, I use the paid service, um, obviously, because uh, once you go through and, <clears throat> excuse me, do the intro levels, you can do that for a few weeks, but uh, it's kind of limited mm -hmm. after you finish the basics. Um, but I really like to use it for, um, I've actually gone through a ton of different packs. They have things like I want to increase my focus or um, I'm panicking right now because I'm about to go on a video podcast. So how about <laughs> I listen to this uh, <laughs> this meditation? Wow, they get really specific. <laughs> well, it's panicking. So it's general panicking. Yeah. Um, and then it has a gamification uh, angle to it as well that will show all the different things that um, you've actually listened to. Um, so, okay, so you've already done a little bit of it. Yeah. So if you look at my journey, I really like the update they've done here recently. Um, they actually show 
all the different things that you've done and which dates. Um, for a long time, they didn't have dates at all. It was just circles on this really weird timeline. So it's really nice to actually see it a bit better of when did I actually meditate. Um, and I had a 220-day streak going nice. until a week and a half ago because um, there's this bug, and I don't know the developers at Headspace. I've been trying to find them. Um, but, yeah, so when you're offline, so I was on the tube, um, it doesn't always sync when you're done and you have 48 hours to meditate and I forgot one day. So it like lost one of them and then I forgot one day and then, Oh no, there goes my streak. Oh, that's uh, a bummer. But yeah. So now I'm on 10 days in a row. It's fine. <laughs> Honestly, the, the most important part about that, I realize gamification has, you know, brings with a certain level of challenge and all that kind of stuff. The most important part about that is like when it comes to meditating, the more days you do it in a row, the big, the bigger benefit you actually get from it. So you didn't really miss any days. It's just the app didn't register it. You're still getting maximum benefit out of it. So that's awesome. That's awesome that you were able to to commit yourself to that. Yeah. I mean, I, it wasn't something that I thought was worthwhile for most of my life, um, but I'm really enjoying it. And it's interesting because you start you know, developing gratitude and you're just like, it's better to handle things that happen in life. I don't know. It's just, it's really nice. So I definitely recommend it. And I do recommend paying for the upgrade as well. If you uh, think you'll actually use it. Yeah. And you can go through here and you'll <laughs> see different categories like anxiety. You can do a free session from there. The, the, the full basics uh, foundation, the first basics foundation is a really good way to start. And it's a full 10 days that you get for free. Um, but yeah, I've noticed it's, it's really nice to, to have, the whole menu of options here, depending on how you, you know, you, d depending on your headspace, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and if you go to the singles tab as well, there, I don't know if you have access to them or not. Um, it's at the top. Uh, oh, but there we go. Basically there's things like going to sleep and this is where the panicking one. So the SOS, so they've got feeling overwhelmed, you're mad, panic, you know, things like that. So then you just uh, go through those. So those are kind of nice to do, but they also have, I'm walking in nature podcasts. I mean, um, uh, meditations <clears throat> and they have ones for kids and everything yeah. love it this is good stuff uh headspace uh is well there, there's kind of it's kind of free to start but it does have a, a service membership component to it so if you want to hop on board uh take a look at the price there and uh yeah there's nothing nothing bad you can really say about meditation and, and mindfulness really yeah <laughs> it can, all it can really, do is improve your yeah. life <laughs> Yeah. And the app is super pretty. It feels materially. I really yeah. like it. Yeah. The app has really done well. I completely agree. Corey, thank you for showing that off. That's awesome. And Flo, I, I will say this app was on my list. I was playing was around it really? with it. Yeah. I Too was bad. playing, but you beat me to it. So sad. So sad. See you later. Um, uh, what you got? Well, do you all remember back in the day... Just you would just buy disposable cameras and then shoot all day, and then the half the fun was finding out what came out of the mm -hmm. Costco development <laughs> envelope, <laughs> which is where I had my photos developed in the '90s and early aughts. Um, well, this app is called Kodak Pro, which is like Kodak, but it's not. It's Kodak. Um, <laughs> this is made by a third-party developer. It's basically what it sounds like. It is a fun virtual uh, disposable camera. If you pay, I think about a dollar, you can unlock um, the ability to see the photos instantly as you take them. But if you don't pay, then you have to wait until you finish off the roll, just like on our original disposable camera, 24 exposures. And by the very end, then it takes about a day to fully process because that's how long it would take for you to drive to Costco, drop off the film, have your mom buy a pallet of muffins because she was probably gearing up for the week as my mother did. We'd put them in the freezer um, and then you would come back. See, see, right there shows you you drove to Costco while I imagine the rest of us drove to the photo mat, which was a little hut in the parking lot. Uh, yeah, I grew up in the, in the suburbs with all the like big box stores. Yeah. So I grew up with yeah. doing all the stuff at Costco. Um, now, I really like this app. I paid for it, the dollar to unlock it, because you can do things like, all right, now I got a purple. You know, purple is my favorite color. It looks like a real, there. it looks like a real you disposable can, camera. On the you, every time you snap a photo, you can physically rotate the. Oh, turn up the volume, though, because it's, it's got a really uh, nice sound. Oh, yeah, I don't I know. Maybe you down. have it muted, actually. Oops. Quiet, you. I wasn't talking to you. Assistant, go away. You're not assisting. You're getting in the way, assistant. <laughs> it just got very upset that I said that. So you shoot with the shutter button and then you 
Oh. Okay, the it, the sound isn't playing. Sorry. Oops. That's okay. I do not want to tell a friend. Um, you can do self-timer. You can select whether or not you want the date on it. You might not want it on there because it'll come out in a part of the photo. Because I unlocked this, um, I can also go into the... I have a whole library where I can go see every, <laughs> a lot of it is pictures of me in a face mask. Um, <laughs> Cause that's when I test things is when I'm doing my <laughs> facial routine. This is just test photos I was taking. You can import, so hold on, I'm gonna move this for away for a second. I'm gonna show you something I'm gonna import here. Um, so let's take this beautiful picture of Vegas and you can go back. Thank you, Victor. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the develop. There we go. And it has been converted into an analog photo. Um, it just looks like it's blurry. The colors are a little off. There's often light leaks. Um, let's see. Let me make sure there's nothing incriminating on here. Uh, <laughs> you never know in this world. Nothing incriminating on here. We can show this. A um, couple photos I ran through here from this is inside the Venetian. This is me with a bib on at a Korean barbecue place. Um, this is an emo selfie I took because I wanted to see how close to like that high school experience I could get. You know, this is a lot of way I took pictures between 2000 and 2003. Um, you can run a scenery photo in there. It'll make it look cool and vintage. This is a, a this is a Vegas, um, the Palazzo right across. So when you're ready, you can just save it, share it, get rid of it if you want, um, or just use it so that you're going out shooting. So here's the viewfinder, and it works front-facing camera and rear camera. It's fun. It's Kudak Pro. It's Kudak Pro. Kudak. And that's Kudak. Kudak. K U D A K. Pro. Kudak. Kudak Pro. And again, really you can tough. Toe in the line for lawsuits. Yeah, I know, right? They got about yeah. as close to that line as they possibly could. Yep. Uh, right on. Kudak Pro. All right. It's that time where you place your vote for your favorite app this week. Go to twit.to slash triple A poll 352. Twit.to slash AAA poll 352 for episode 352. And tell us which is your favorite app this week. Is it Proton VPN? Is it String.io? Headspace? Or Kudak Pro? Place your vote. We'll Let's check see, in on it Victor. next week. But Victor is, sometimes he sets the... I know. He... He, oh. went, he went for the Kudak. Oh, that's gift, Victor's gift to me for having worked so, worked so hard at CES. <laughs> yes. Thank that's, you, Victor. Thanks, that's, Victor. All, that's all it takes. It looks fun. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. It's cool. Uh, um, do it the unpaid way and see if it's fun. It is fun. I mean, hey, sometimes it's nice to impose limits on yourself in life. Right? It it brings back that spirit of pointing and shooting. Right. And not, not everything knowing. has to be immediate immediate gratification. Let's wait for That's things right, again. Let's go back to waiting for things. That's right, me. Oh, and un, and unlike having the the real what the Fuji instant cameras now nowadays, like and then yeah. when you're at Disneyland and you see you see people like holding up the instant picture and taking a picture with their <laughs> and then they have a pocket full of right. With right there, phone. yeah. <laughs> Corey's got it. Show, show that again, Corey. The Instax. In, in, what is that? Yeah, those are awesome. I oh. got those for my nieces. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen those. Before. I just gave one to my cousin, my old. They're one. great. How, how, how expensive are they? Are they? Oh, they're, they're like they're like sixty bucks, seventy oh, okay. bucks. You can buy them in bulk at Costco. They come with a bunch of film already. Oh, wow. What's <laughs> what's old is new again, again. And again, yep. and again, and again, and yep. again. Uh, awesome stuff. Corey Lanislaw, really appreciate you taking time uh, to be our guest tonight. It was a lot of fun having you along. Thank you for, for joining us and taking time out of your Tuesday. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you're, um, you're on a sabbatical right now. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of taking a break. And uh, I think many of us are, are a little jealous about that. Uh, what do you want people to know about finding you when you emerge from the sabbatical or where people, where should people go to, to find all about the stuff that you have worked on? Yeah, actually I am emerging now. I think um, okay. I'm starting to think about moving internationally. So uh, I'm uh -huh. eyeing London and Berlin right now, um, but might consider other places. We'll see. Uh, but as far as finding me, I'm on the Twitter and Corey Ladislaw, and then also CoreyLadislaw.com. Um, I'll probably be speaking at a conference near you sometime awesome. soon. Awesome. If if and when you're in the area, um, 
let us know. We would love to have you up in the studio if you're ever if you're ever around and you want to make the trek up. It's always a lot of fun to to get folks in the studio. It brings a whole other energy to the show and it's a cool experience. So yeah, it's here, not that far. Yeah, well, okay. Now wait a minute, but back up though. You said you're in London right now. No, I was. I'm in oh. San Francisco as of Saturday. Okay, because you said that, and I was like, "Wait a minute! It's three o'clock in the morning in London." <laughs> I nope. and I haven't apologized for that yet. Okay, <laughs> which we usually do profusely. <laughs> <laughs> which we do because we have guests on from yeah. time to time, and it's like four o'clock in the morning when they come on. Uh, anyways, we would love to have you back. Just let us know if, uh, if and when you know you, you feel comfortable and want to want to come back. We would love to have you. Thank you. Okay. For, awesome. Thank you for hopping on tonight. It's a yes, lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Flo. What about you? I'm still recovering from CES right yeah. now, so you're not going to see a lot from me this week. Um, I'm just tired. I need <laughs> my brain needs a break. Uh, CES was interesting. I'm transitioning a lot more to smart home these days. So if you're interested in what I'm writing about the smart home, um, you can actually just follow me at FlorenceIron.com for now. And if you're looking for my Android musings, I'm still writing once in a while for Android Authority about Android. Um, it's kind of a quiet time right now anyway in the Android world. So it's yeah. not much to say. Until the S9. Yeah, there's, yeah, until, until Mobile, Mobile World, world Congress, Congress, there's yeah. really not much to say right now um, other than I, I'll i just be talking to people in Silicon Valley and seeing what's going on. Cool. You know. There's not much to say about smartphones, but we will oh, certainly but try because we have say. shows every <laughs> single week. <laughs> there's a ton to say about, sorry, Google Assistant, because there's a lot of stuff coming out yeah. from, from that. So we're just, ch I'm just... Chasing where Google's going. Cool. Sounds, to the home. That's a good chase. It's a good chase. What about you, Ron? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at RonXO and on Instagram at RonXO. That's where a lot of my nonsense is posted these days. And I'm working on some cool stuff that's going to come out this year. I know I was, I've been teasing some stuff for the past few months, but things are starting to come together. So uh, I shared some fun stuff to share. So my, that's about it. My, I love yeah, fun stuff. Interest. I know. Fun yeah. stuff's great. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a fan of fun stuff. Uh, yeah. I know Victor's a fan of fun stuff too. And Victor, thank you for all the fun stuff that you did today on the show. Uh, you can find me at yellowgoldmusic.com, jasonhowell.net. Uh, that's, that's really about it. You know, Tech News Weekly. I'm doing uh, new screensavers this weekend. So if you want to send in some Android related questions for that, uh, email newscreensavers at twit.tv. And Leo and I can, uh, you know, maybe answer those on the show. Maybe do a little, do you a solid there. Uh, but that is it for this week. Leave us a voicemail for this show, 347 Show AAA. Send us emails at AAA at twit.tv. Find us on Twitter. We're at Android Show. Uh, Arena Apps, uh, the whole list can be found at twit.to slash Android Apps. And big thanks to the folks who maintain that each and every week. Show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash a -A -A. You'll find all our episodes there, all our show notes. And if you want to catch the live stream, you can every Tuesday around 5 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. Or you can come into the studio. We have a gentleman here who is here in the studio. It's been awesome having an actual person in here. Email tickets at twit.tv and you can sit in on the recording of the show. That is it for this week, everyone. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. Woo! Bye. It's time to eat some Oreos. Are you ready to eat some Oreos? Yes. We'll do it here yes. in the pre-show. Yes, I am. I said last week, I went on a tear. I went on an Amazon tear. I spent probably too much money. Did you get the ones with Tide Pods? <laughs> no, although the number, City, people, the, the number of people who really wanted to send us the Tide Pods joke is is, is a lot. <laughs> Seriously, why why are people eating these things? I bet you it's just like raspberry and like cherry or something weird and fruity. I, well, I don't think it actually exists. I think it was just a Photoshop. It's a it's a Photoshop job. I doubt it. I'm sure, but if it did exist, this is what I imagined oh. it would be. I was like, I don't think they do that it's flow. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, oh, like blueberry and raspberry. That would actually be an interesting flavor. Um, but seriously, kids, don't eat Tide Pods. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, don't. Just because they don't taste die. like anything when you put it in your mouth doesn't mean it's not going to kill you. Actually, chemicals. Um, which is why they need to put an outer coat on those things to make them taste repulsive. Well, they made them so yeah. that children can touch them and not like be poisoned by putting their fingers in her mouth. That's why they're in pods now. <laughs> yeah, but still have a really bad sour taste to them. So people, the minute they put it in their mouth, like they spit Like cabbage. It 
Sour <laughs> cabbage. Worse than cabbage. Worse. Okay, but today's flavor that you actually can eat if you can find them, which you probably can't unless you're you're crazy like me and you go on Amazon, uh, is chocolate hazelnut Oreo. Have you ever heard of this flavor? Oh, you, you got to be kidding me. Really? Yes. Oh, look. You oh, have to put some in a Ziploc bag not, and I'm send it to Ron. I'm not kidding you at all. Chocolate I hazelnut. Love- I love hazelnut. Oh, man. So do I. I'm actually drinking hazelnut coffee right now, which again, oh, is going to backfire so, on me in about an hour. Yeah, this is going to it's going to be like battle of the hazelnuts. So, I'm sorry that I can't get the thing open. Okay, there we go. Oh, I can't wait for this one. Uh, the, I, I got to say, I mean, right off the top it looks really good. It's uh it's got so your good. it's actually <laughs> like a vanilla cookie <laughs> with a hazelnut chocolate on the inside. So I'll toss it oh, to it you. Looks- it's like inverted. Interesting. Yeah. Is that a van- yeah. Oh. Uh huh. I, I think I'm gonna really like this. Do you guys like yeah. Nutella, Corey? Have you ever yes. had Nutella? I love Nutella. Sometimes I eat it with a spoon out of the jar. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. How about sometimes you eat it sandwiched in between two vanilla cookies? That's what I'm. Gonna I'm do. dipping it in my coffee. Mm. And I kind of wish I was in the studio right now. I'm sorry. Hmm. That's actually really really good. <laughs> Mm, mm. Um, yeah, it works. I mean, this is this is the t- a, a flavor combination that was made for for each other. What do you think? I'm in heaven right now. <laughs> I don't want to do the show. I just want to eat cookies. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. The show has been canceled. We're gonna eat some cookies. Um, I'm I, very jealous of those. I'm I mean, very jealous. They do a good job on the package selling it too, right? Like it's it's like a jar of Nutella essentially. We do need to send if that doesn't to Ron. if that doesn't move items, I don't know what's going. We to need do to send it. So, to Ron. So what is okay. uh, what are, what are the ratings? Ratings. What are the ratings of chocolate hazelnut Oreo? <laughs> Here you go, Burke's claw hand thing. Um, oh boy, if I had to rate this, a eight, nine, somewhere around there. I mean, it's definitely higher end. I think it's a nine. It's high high scale. It's right underneath the original Oreo. That's how yeah. good it is. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I'm Did so you get good. a second one or is that your first one? This is my first one. You're just, very good. I shoved the whole thing in my mouth. I just I didn't <laughs> want to bog bog everybody down. I'm going to hold on to this. It's going to be really good with my coffee later. I do not want another one. Cold. I should not have another one. There will be there will be more at after the show is done, right? Although I didn't everyone? eat very much at CES last week, so I've got some th- some eating to make up for. 